I'd much uh, rather talk about the suburbs of South Yorkshire, actually, and, uh, and other stuff, Danny. Maybe we'll do that another time, but good morning to you, and thank you. Uh, not just for making some time this morning, but also, seriously, for your frankness uh, after the matches that we've had so far and, and on Tuesday, if it's any consolation, certainly the listeners and, and uh, audience appreciated you pouring your heart out a little bit to us and, and sharing what you could from the dressing room. Um, has it been continually that sort of week, Danny? Uh, what the, the consequences of Tuesday night and the opening to the season broadly so far have been is, I guess, what people are most interested in from a, from a dressing room spirit point of view. Yeah, I think it's important you move on quickly. I think I've said it before, Oggy, from those moments, it's always emotional, um, players and coaches, but you have to move on quickly and prepare for the next game because they come thick and fast. Mm. Uh, how have you managed personally in, in terms of the frustrations that, that you have talked about? Have you had to do some, some reassuring even of players? Uh, have you had to do some more ranting? some more harsh exchanges, even since Tuesday, perhaps? I think it's more reflecting um, and looking at sort of the individual needs of the players. Everybody reacts differently to sort of losses and wins. So it's sort of reflecting, analysing how to feed back to the players, uh, what kind of way you do that, what's going to have the most impact in order to um, try and change things quickly. That can't have been easy at times, though, because as you shared with us as best you could, some players blew it or, or didn't really make much of a contribution at all in that cup tie against Preston. Yeah, it's always difficult. Um, I don't think it's from a player's lack of trying. I think it's whatever whatever it is, is it a confidence thing? They're just not on the game. Um, that's why football's so beautiful. It's very difficult to sort of find exactly what the reasons are, but that's what we do. We, we try and reflect, we try and analyse the performances individually, collectively. We reflect on our performances as well as coaching staff and see how we can put things right. You don't need to be a highly qualified football coach, Danny, to, to draw the conclusion that the players that we saw reach the playoff final last season don't suddenly become bad players uh, in the opening three days, uh, games of any season. Um, can you put your finger on a tendency? There must be more than one reason why results haven't gone your way so far. Is there... Uh, a slowness in getting going so far this season. I hate to reach for the, the, the cliche, but is there a hangover from the playoff final of some kind? Um, I think that term's always used when you have a successful season previously and then you go into a new one. Um, I don't really like to look for excuses. I think um, it was a very short pre-season. A um, few players left, a few players came in. Um, it's always... It's always new. It's a, it's a new start. Everybody comes into pre-season, pre-season ready to work. Um, I think three and a half week pre-season, just under four weeks, I think it was. Um, did it help? Um, we had games where ideally probably another two pre-season games would have been would have been ideal for us in terms of our preparations. Um, but but again, look, it sounds like there's excuses there. But we needed just to take what we had to perform in that pre-season, trying at the um, ground run at the start of the championship season, but um, we've, we've not started off too well. If you had preconceived ideas as head coach as to how you were going to play throughout the course of the coming season, is there still time to change those? I'm thinking off the top of my head, formations, first names on the team sheet. Uh, are you, Danny Schofield, head coach, thinking... We're going to have to start all over again here because it's been a disaster in the opening three games. No, I think the players are, are very adaptable. Um, and all last season and pre-season, um, they've been coached to be adaptable and flexible in, in different systems, playing in different positions. So it's something that the players um, can easily do. What we're all looking forward to, of course, is a, is a happier conversation after a match, a happier atmosphere. Your first three o'clock home match, albeit against a well-equipped Stoke team, almost feels like a restart because it's our first traditional home match at the normal kickoff time, if there is such a thing anymore. Can you reset the mindset of the squad uh, in advance of this game against Stoke? Yeah, I think that's always the focus. Um, I think whether it's a win or a loss, it's move on to the next game and prepare prepare to win that game. That's, that's the most important thing. Um, 
So I think you're right in saying the mindset's reset, but that's after a win or a loss. Let's move on to that next game, learn from learn from areas that we can certainly improve on and um, take the positives out going into that next fixture. I need to take some of the reaction from spectators and contributors to our radio shows and, and social media output, Danny, from the opening phase of the season, if I may. Uh, theories, and some of them are, are very unusual, abound. For example, some of the players don't care enough. They, they did enough to reach the final last year. Uh, and without downing tools, are just going through the motions. Is that something that you can see? How, how, how conscionable would you allow that to be as head coach? No, I don't think I don't think that's the case. I've said before, um, the group of players here and and them as people are, are great. Um, I don't think the the data shows that they don't tr not try. I think they put in the full effort. Um, I think it can be really challenging for a football player when times are hard, um, and the perception maybe watching the games when um, when we're, when we're struggling in the game and the results not going well. I think sometimes you think this without really really seeing, seeing the evidence on the pitch. Um, but no, I don't think that's the case with the players. I think every one of them wants to try hard for this football club um, and we're going to work hard to try and turn it round um, as quickly as possible. I'll share another common one, uh, finally, Danny, at the risk of either making you laugh loudly or possibly infuriating you. Uh, a theory that's been suggested is that because you have been um, an assistant head coach so far, in the recent regimes at Huddersfield Town, and you've been a kind of occasional negotiator and peacemaker between head coach and squad, that you're too close emotionally to some of the players and therefore can't express the authority that is needed from a head coach to make radical changes that are needed, clearly, from results on the field. Um, you're too matey. The head coach is too matey with the players. That's okay. basically it. OK, that's the question. Um, no, I don't think that's the case. I think um, every coach has his unique personality and his unique ways of doing things. Um, I think there's certainly a strength in me being at the club um, as a B-team coach, as an assistant coach, and now as a head coach, because I, I understand what the vision is. Um, I understand the processes that are in place. So I think there's a, there's a big advantage to that. Um, in terms of the too matey, too friendly question, um, I don't, I don't really understand that. I think it's all about your unique personality in order to get the best out of football players. And I think a lot of successful coaches do things in different ways. Um, but that, that, that's my focus and the, the coaching staff's focus. How can we get the best out of these football players for um, the next game? The truth is, there's an elephant in the room here. It is a bit early, surely, for us to be even talking about these things. We're only two championship games in. Yes, you got knocked out of the cup in, in difficult circumstances. Crisis? Are you calling it a crisis yet? No, certainly not a crisis. I think um, two games in the championship, we've not we've not won any of those games. Um, you, I think it's way too early. A, a, a win against Stoke, a back-to-back -back wins, it moves up the table really, really quickly. So we're not looking at, at the table. We're looking at what goes off daily standards we're implementing daily, whether they're still, whether they're there consistently to perform. Um, and then really focusing on that process to make sure we can get a win against Stoke. Thank you, Danny. Will you give us a bit more practical information on the squad? Have you got any players who suddenly are not available through injury? Uh, any other nice radical ideas about bringing in fresh blood from the B team or, or the peripheries of the squad? I'm thinking Phillips or, or Danny Grant, who was on the team sheet. Injuries first. No, injury-wise, um, we're pretty good to go from the uh, press, from the players who were available from Preston. Um, the young B team players, they're constantly training alongside the first team. Um, whether they'll get opportunity against Stoke um, remains to be seen, but... Yeah, we're, we're, we're fully fit from what Preston was, barring, um, barring the ones that were not available. All the very best on Saturday, Danny. Thank you, as always. Cheers, Oggy. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Paul. We'll come Thank to you. Stephen in the room next, please. Hi, Danny. You, you mentioned...
players from Preston will be available. Jonathan Hogg, Danny Ward, they went in your squad. Are they were they just rested? Are they available for tomorrow? Yeah, they're available. Um, they had slight minor, minor issues, but they'll be available. Okay, that's good news. I mean, one positive you can take out: you both of your strikers have scored goals over the last two games. That must give you at least something to build on. Yeah, I think so. It's always good for the strikers to get up and running early on in the season. Um, we'll need other players to contribute, obviously, to scoring goals. But um, yeah, um, it's good for them to get the goal early. When you look back on Tuesday's performance, what are the things you think might need a, a bit of work and a bit of particular focus against Stoke tomorrow? I think the way sort of we conceded the goals, um, we we were very open. We left a lot of spaces. Um, I think Preston had good quality in those moments, but I think we didn't help in terms of how we defended those moments. So I think sometimes the defensive structure and the way we pressed been good, but then at other times it's been. It's been a bit open. We've left the spaces for um, good players to exploit. I suppose it's an obvious point to make, but starting well is particularly imperative after the last few games. Yeah, yeah that's something we've we've spoke about and, um, yeah, we need to address. What sort of game are you expecting from Stoke specifically? Um, yeah, again, a, a very tough game. Um, they've started the season pretty solidly. Um, I think it's going to be quite intense. I think it's going to be a physical game. Um I think it's going to be um, a game where we need to be well organised defensively. They've got a big attacking threats, um, and then we need to obviously be focused on how we're going to attack against their their structure. How important is tomorrow's game? I mean, some people saying it's a must win for you. Is that how you feel about it? Um, I see every game as a must win. Really, um, going into the game, you've got to give everything you can to win that football game. Obviously, after two losses in the league in the Carabao Cup. It, it, it does seem more heightened, but for me personally, it's every every game's every game's a must win. I think Oggy got most of my others, so that's all for me. Cheers. Cheers. So we'll go to Leon online first. Oh, hi, Danny. Are you okay? You okay? Hi, Leon. Hi, mate. Hello. Is is there a little bit of a, of a conundrum? You want your team to play and you know everything you do on the training ground and play your style, but then obviously with the results, you know you want to you're conscious of being really hard to beat and getting back to basics, if you like, and the the result just first above everything else? Yeah, I think like mastering like the basics is always like a focus, what, whatever style of football you want to play. Um, when results aren't going well and the performance aren't consistent, I think there's been some really good things we've seen. We've been replicated from the training pitch, but when it's not consistent enough, um, I think you yeah. always sort of want to focus on those basics a little bit more. Obviously, everyone's disappointing. You know, it's been a disappointing start. I mean, they, I suppose you wanted to see the the sort of anger from the from the players as well, the hurt from the players. That's that's you know, it can be a positive in that regard, isn't it? You can have a go at them, but you want to see them be angry as well. And I'm sure they are. You've got a lot of good good professionals there. Yeah, the players are obviously very disappointed, and there's lots of emotions after the game, and everybody cares. Um, the, the, nobody goes out not to try. You yeah. go out to try and perform to the best of their ability, try and give everything. Um, and yeah, yeah there's, there's obviously disappointment, but we, we've got to move on quickly and get onto the, the focus for the next game. And, and I suppose for yourself, obviously, you, you had head coach, you, you, you do take it home, you're thinking about it all the time. I mean, it's but it's always going to happen at any at some point of your journey, and it obviously happened at, at the start for you. you you've had the sleep, sleepless nights and stuff like that already, I would have thought. Yeah, no, the, the start's been tough, um, obviously, for myself and I think everybody else involved with it. But it's it, that's I think that's what football is. I don't think yeah. any football club, any coach suffer, goes yeah. through their journey or their career without suffering at some point. This is all what it is. It's all part of it. Um, yeah. It's always about how you respond. Obviously, the questions from the media yeah. are tough because they're yeah. always probing... A reaction, I think, from that. But look, it's inevitable that these moments happen in football. I think yeah. Alex Ferguson was one goal away from getting the sack. They might have never been an Alex Ferguson at Manchester United at yeah. one moment yeah. in time. Yeah. I think it was Mark Robbins who scored the goal to keep his keep yeah. his job alive. But look, this yeah. is this is what football is, and fortunes can be changed on moments as well. So yeah. one magical moment, one defensive tackle, these kind of things can really kickstart a season. And we're hoping to get that against Stoke. Yeah, and it's just the final. It's the it's the here and now, isn't it? If you can just get get a win against Stoke, it just everything changes with with supporters and the mindset. It's 
that's how it that's how it is, isn't it? It can be feast or famine almost. <laughs> yeah, everything's everything's focused on results. It's built on results. Um yeah. and um yeah, I've spoke about like process and me being process driven. Yeah. I hundred percent am. And I think without that, the results don't become yeah consistent. So that's the focus, but obviously we yeah. the result needs to be a win. Very best of luck tomorrow, Danny. Cheers, Cheers Leon. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Danny. How are you doing? Morning, Alfie. Good, mate. Thanks. Good stuff. Can I just put your brains about Jack Rodoni's role the other night? Yeah. Be more central, a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, you mentioned on Tuesday after the game about sort of looking looking back on the game, and, and that seemed a real positive. Yeah. Just just what did you make of his performance and him in that deeper role, more central? Yeah, I think I said before about Jack, he's a very versatile player. I think we knew that when we were doing the um, research on his recruitment. Um, I feel as though... He can play in a number of positions of defend when defending and when attacking. Um, and I think that's important to have that in the squad. And just I think you mentioned on Tuesday as well that, that switching to a, a three slash five across the back allowed him to, to sort of play in that central role. Do you feel that it has to be that system for him to play there? Or do you think that he could play that little bit deeper with a four behind him? Yeah, no, I think he is that adaptable um, that he could probably play with a four or a five behind him. Yeah, and um, just in terms of his his goal threat, you don't think that that, that kind of position would would stop his sort of potential to score goals in this team? Potentially, it doesn't mean he's sitting a little bit deeper, but I think he can also be creative with assists to sort of feed other players to score. Yeah, and uh, just on on goals, and then your strikers, Steve sort of mentioned it there about Danny and Jordan both scoring. How important were those minutes and and that goal for Jordan the other night just to get him up and running? Yeah, I think really important. Um, Jordan has been fantastic pre-season. Um, he's continued his work ethic, his intensity, and um, I think the the effort he put into the game, he deserved his goal. I think the goal that was offside was debatable as well. Um, so maybe he could have had two. And uh, just finally from me, last season, I think it's been lost on a lot of people that it was a little bit of a struggle at the start of last season as well. And I think it was the game against Preston in the league where no shot on target, but a 1-0 win with an own goal. A little bit lucky. Do you feel like a side that, that needs that bit of luck just to get you going? Yeah, I think you earn your own luck in this game. So we, we're going to continue working hard. And then hopefully that luck falls for us or that moment of magic like I've spoken about. But yeah, seasons can be changed on one on one moment. It's almost like the kickstart we're looking for.